Hi there, it's Arlen and Elsa Salty, and this is the Break Forth Journeys podcast. This is the podcast that brings you from the comfort of your home to walk the pages of Scripture in the very lands of the Bible. Most of these recordings are from our main spiritual teacher for all of our Break Forth Journeys tours, the renowned award-winning author from Sweden, Reverend Hans Weisbrot. But before we get into our show today, we want to invite you to join us for one or more of our spiritual journeys to the lands of the Bible. Every tour sells out, so please ask for your free brochures today at BreakforthJourneys.com. Today, we want to highlight our next tour, Break Forth Israel and Jordan Next Level, in October 2021. We'll spend time at biblical sites in Israel, biblical sites in Jordan, as well as the jaw-dropping sites of Petra and Wadi Rum. But we want to let you know that we're almost sold out with only a few spots left. So if you want to experience the spiritual journey of a lifetime with Hans, Elsa and me, our worship team, local teachers, and so much more, please go to BreakForthJourneys.com today before every spot is gone. Please don't delay. Okay, now let's get started with today's teaching from Hans. Polycarp, believed to have been led to Christ by the Apostle John, became a martyr for his faith. Listen in as Hans gives a message about Polycarp and his stance for Christ 2,000 years ago. Now, here's Hans. And, and that made the city uh, unique. It, it's uh, loyalty to Rome. And one example of this was 100 years uh, before Christ, um, the Roman soldiers were in a big war zone. And uh, here in Smyrna, uh, the inhabitants took off their own clothes and sent them to the Roman soldiers. So that was, that was something that tells you something about their level of, of, of loyalty. Uh, this city is also known for its beauty. It's known to be a beautiful, beautiful city. Um, and uh, it um, had an expression that was really connected to the city, and that is the crown of Smyrna. And the crown was when you came from the sea, I don't know what direction the sea is now, but let's say this, right? Maybe. When, 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 you, when you came from the sea, and you saw the city, you saw the coastline, you saw the harbor, and then you saw the hill, and you saw all the beautiful buildings on the hill, and it looked like a crown. And that was also how you used to, to worship the idols. You, you, you had the statue, and you put, so to speak, a crown, a, a wreath, wreath? Yeah. wreath on it, and that was like a crown. So this city was very much connected to, to a crown, the crown of, of Smyrna was an expression, and that really expressed the, the beauty of this city, known to be a, a beautiful city. Uh, and um, now, this is really interesting when we come to uh, the letter to Smyrna, which is uh, the first biblical text that we are going to address uh, throughout this trip. And. Uh, the letter to Smyrna, we have, of course, in the book of Revelation, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 8. And this is the first word of God to greet you uh, when we start our pilgrimage now that is going to end up in Patmos, the island where the Apostle John received the whole book of Revelation. I've been to Patmos a number of times, as I've been here a number of times, and, and, and Patmos almost deserves a warning label, because when you get there, you don't want to leave. <laughs> it's a very special place. But this is true as well. We are on biblical ground. And, and don't forget also that the, the letters that are sent to the, to the uh, congregation of the book of Revelation, it's uh, uh, from Jesus himself. So Jesus you know, speaking directly to the congregation. And I've just mentioned briefly a little bit about the history. I will, I will, I will uh, extend on this when we come to the hotel. But uh, uh, 
I just read the text and keep the history in mind. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. And this was perfectly appropriate for this city. This city had been dead and then had become alive again. So the people would really be, be able to, to kind of, you know, understand this from, from their own city's history. Everybody knew that lived here that the city had been dead, yet lived. And, and the best translation of the Greek might be, which was dead, yet is alive. Was dead, yet is alive. Um, and it, then it goes on. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Uh, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Uh, and, and here Jesus is kind of, you know, turning things upside down, right? Because they had weakness. They were persecuted. They were pressured. And, and maybe it's not a coincidence uh, that we come here and the first word of God that, that we receive uh, today is a word spoken to a congregation that was under pressure. Right? So probably you, many of you are come here today and you have no struggle whatsoever in your life. <laughs> yeah, right. I congratulate you, right? <laughs> but the rest of us, 99%, we, we, can, we can relate to the thing about pressure, right? About being weak? Well, that was exactly uh, the position for the congregation here. You know, imagine being a Christian congregation in a city that was, you know, fanatically loyal to the emperor. Imagine being the only ones in the city that did not worship the emperor as the god. It was pressure, you know, just uh, living here. And Jesus turns the picture around. And maybe this is a thing he wants to say to you too today. Uh, you can taste the words. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Remember what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount? Blessed are those who are rich in the spirit. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't say that, right? No. Blessed are those who are poor in the spirit. Right? Who, who understand that they are they are poor in themselves, right? Dependent on the Lord. I think we are here because we kind of recognize that we are poor in ourselves. We need God to come and fill us once again, speak to us once again, bless us once again, forgive us once again, and, you know, uh, uh, make our hearts catch fire once again. I think really that's why Jesus has called you on this trip. Um, the text goes on. Uh, uh, and I'll read the whole text in the evening meeting. I'll just give you a little part now. Verse 10. Fear none of these things which thou shalt, shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Do you understand how, how appropriate that was for the city that was called the crown? that had, had, had coins, that had crowns on them. That was the very symbol of the city. And now Jesus is telling the Christians here, I will give you the crown of life. See? And now, uh, finally, we won't speak long here. We have here the picture of Polycarp. On the picture there, and on the picture there. And Polycarp, he was uh, probably, the tradition says, he became a Christian when the Apostle John came up to him. Because the Apostle John lived in Ephesus, right? That is uh, like uh, uh, one and a half hour, I think, drive from here at the most. Uh, but they didn't have cars, so it took a little bit longer, right? Mm -hmm. And he came up here and, and, and was really uh, uh, a person who, who turned people into Christ, of course. And Polycarp, uh, it is said, he became a Christian under the influence of the Apostle John. So here you have a person that is in direct connection to the person who received the book of Revelation. And uh, it is uh, said about uh, Polycarp that he became a bishop uh, 
here in Smyrna. He was the first bishop in this city. And you can imagine being a, a bishop here. Uh, he lived between 69 to 156. Uh, and uh, it also says the tradition that, that um, they had games because they had that every once in a while to celebrate uh, their loyalty to the emperor. And at the games they had, you know, gladi you say gladiators? Mm -hmm. Gladiators who, who, who fought uh, uh, and they had festivities, they had, uh, you know, worship of idols and the, 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 the town was filled with people and it was really something that people looked forward to. And during that period uh, they also um, unfortunately um, persecuted Christians in a more severe way if they didn't worship the emperor's god. And it is said that a young man called Germanicus uh, was, uh, he was martyred, maybe at the very spot where we are right now. And he was so calm and he was so peaceful when, when they took his life that people were aggravated. And they started to shout uh, uh, about Polycarp, that was the great leader in, 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 in Smyrna. And they, they started to shout in the stadium, and we might be, be sitting on top of the stadium that is almost 2,000 years old. And they were starting to, to shout, you know, uh, bring us Polycarp, uh, take Polycarp to the stake. And Polycarp lived uh, on the countryside, and they hid him for a while in different farms outside of, of, of uh, Smyrna. But Polycarp, I've read the text myself, he decided after a while that I can't be running, I can't be fleeing, I have to be an example for my Christian brothers and sisters. So he came here uh, to all the people, to that you know, festival, uh, a very mean festival, but he came here and uh, uh, they charged him and they, they uh, sentenced him to death and they asked him to renounce his faith. They gave him a last chance before they, they uh, uh, torched him. Uh, and he said, and it's a famous quote in the history of the church, the Christian church, he said, uh, for 86 years have I served Christ and he has never failed me. How can I let him down now? Isn't that powerful? For 86 years I have served Christ and he has never failed me. How can I let him down now? And then they torched him. Uh, and this picture here it speaks about that. And, and it also speaks about him uh, showing uh, signs of joy and, and the fire not, not, not um, uh, killing him. So they had to stab him um, for him to die. Uh, and this is a very old tradition, and we, here we are uh, on the very grounds where a holy person lived who was connected to the Apostle John, that the whole trip is going to be about, more about Jesus, but also about the Apostle John, of course. And this is the perfect place, I think, for us to pray right now. Uh, when we are standing on holy ground, a person who gave his life to, to, to Jesus uh, and paid the highest of prices. This is a great place to, to just... Um, uh, in the midst of us being tired, just um, stopping and, and praying before we would sing a worship song. Well, we thank you, Holy Father. You, you, you know that we are tired. You know us better than we know ourselves. And we thank you so much for, for um, uh, bringing us here. And Lord, we think that, that it's not a coincidence that we are here. That we are the very specific group that we are. That each and every one of us who are here are here. We think it's not a coincidence, Lord. We think it's because you have called us. You have given us a personal invitation. You have opened up uh, for us to come here at this very specific point of time. And Lord, we don't know so much about what you are going to do here, but we just want to, to uh, um, acknowledge the fact that we think that we are invited by you personally. And we just pray that these days will be your days. Of course, days of rest, Lord. We pray for lots of rest. And we pray for lots of laughter. And we pray for lots of, of cultural uh, exciting impressions. And we, and we pray for lots of wonderful experiences as we travel. But we pray first and foremost, Lord, that, that this would be a trip that would um, just um, make us love the Bible even more. Uh, and, and make us love you even more. And Lord, we are standing on holy ground. We're standing where Polycarp gave his life 
uh, uh, to you. And, and we pray, Lord, that um, that, would, um, that would stir up our hearts at this very moment. Lord, that, that we would be encouraged to be bold, to stand up for you, to be faithful to you. And Lord, uh, we don't want this to be a heavy burden, but we pray that you would just um, uh, make our hearts, uh, you would uh, make our hearts just uh, glow more and more. That your fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit would, would just uh, come into our hearts. And that you would just... Uh, Turn us on fire for you, Lord. Give us your passion. We pray that. And Lord, when we are standing on this very spot, we also pray, Lord, for, for uh, all the people who, who are in this church. We bless them. We bless this congregation. We thank you for this Christian congregation here in the middle of Izmir. And we, we, we just want to bless the whole Christian church here. And pray for a revival, Lord. Perhaps we're sent here also to pray for a revival. And we also pray for everyone who lives in this village, in this city, Lord, for your blessing. We pray that, Lord. And then, Arlen, could you lead us in our Father? And then in a worship song, please. Okay. Our Father, who art who in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be this attitude. In thee, oh Lord, I put my trust. I put my trust. In thee, oh Lord, I put my trust. In
clean this food. Just like Smyrna, in the midst of the land, it is poured to them. Let's hold hands and proclaim this truth. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Sing it out. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. thank you that you give unto us and you have given unto us Lord God what a great truth that we walk in that reality and just like you've walked with us for so many years maybe not as many as 86 but whatever years that you have granted us as we've walked with you Lord God you have always been faithful you will continue to be faithful Amen. and so in that way not in our own strength but in the strength of your Holy Spirit Amen. we see Lord God be our strength so that we can be faithful in, you. in Jesus name Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Break Forth Journeys podcast. We pray you were richly blessed. Before we leave you today, we want to remind you that you can experience an incredible spiritual journey of a lifetime to the lands of the Bible with Hans as your spiritual teacher at virtually every biblical site on the tour. We also serve as leaders as well as leading in times of worship and prayer along the way. As you can imagine, having Hans as your teacher, every tour sells out, sometimes a year or more in advance. If you'd like to learn more about our tours, see beautiful photos of the Holy Lands, read blog posts about new discoveries, as well as to receive a free copy of our book, The Christian Pilgrim's Insider's Guide, please head over to BreakForthJourneys.com. Until next time, may God richly bless you day by day.